A spiritual sage is one who only wants to enter into absolute communion with the unseen mystery and consciously dwell in the great heart. In this false reality, there really is only one problem. This problem manifests in a variety of ways, yet at its core, we can call it loneliness and boredom. These two aspects of human existence are actually the same issue, and they are the natural conditions of existence. The emotional heart experiences loneliness and the mental body experiences boredom. Everything we face ultimately comes down to this circumstance. And all solutions we tend to seek in this world result in little more than temporary escape from this anguish. It's what I often call the torment of self. This is why most spiritual and materialistic pursuits in the world do not really resolve the core problem, because it is actually a problem that has already been solved, yet the solution is not recognized because the problem is not recognized. If you look at relationship dynamics in this present-day modern culture, you will inevitably conclude that arguments, opinions, disagreements, religious, political, and philosophical quarrels are hotbeds of emotional immaturity, resulting in conflict, heated arguments, and fighting over contrasting differences of opinion. Now, some people actually enjoy this, especially perhaps some brainy academic types or narcissistic personalities, as well as many people who just seem to thrive on dominance and control. But for me, and many like me, we don't care for these kinds of mind games. Instead, we are looking to embody an entirely different model of human existence. It is the quest for inner tranquility through communion with the living current of life. I have discovered directly for myself that this is the only solution to solving the problem of loneliness and boredom. And it's like the Native American shaman Sun Bear used to say, if your philosophy doesn't grow corn, then I'm not interested. That's the trouble, especially in this age of information. There is too much mental gymnastics going on, too many ideas, too much commentary on the commentary, and not enough silence and space where one can actually absorb the truth of who they really are, what I call the divine nobody. In this video, I'm going to talk about what is truly essential along this path of primal conscious living and how to ground ourselves instinctively with real organic life. For it is our exposure to toxic foods, polluted air, disharmonic frequencies, and even toxic people that is the reason we keep finding ourselves struggling to thrive emotionally physically and spiritually. Loneliness affects everyone at some point, and this often becomes worse as we get older. And it's especially apparent in the world of online dating, where thousands and thousands of people are trying to find the right partner, spending years hoping, wishing, waiting, only to end up disappointed, unfulfilled, and alone and realizing that the world out there is merely a reflection of what's happening within ourselves. I've been through countless hours of conversations with many different people, 
only to discover that the majority of these connections turn into arguments or disagreements or discordant differences of opinion. It's difficult to sustain any meaningful relationship beyond the superficial, which is perfectly okay, but ultimately unsatisfying and pretty meaningless. After several years of pursuing this path of looking for a companion, I eventually came to the realization that it was time to put it to rest and to embark instead on an inward journey toward the great heart. What is the great heart? It is the process whereby one learns to trade their individuality for their inherent totality. To understand this idea, just think about an individual drop of water. By its very nature and relative to its size, the drop of water functions just like an ocean, though the individual drop cannot erode a continental shelf, it can erode a fleck of dust. This is because the individual drop possesses the same powers that the ocean does. Similarly, we too are like individual pieces of God. Now, when you put a drop of water back into the ocean, it loses its individuality, yet it begins to experience its totality. The original God, Source, Creator is all one. And in this all oneness, God is alone. The myriad of forms that arise out of the Source Creator are all temporary. Think about it. Each thing will eventually dissipate and return again. All goodness and evil, all holiness as well as sin, all is God. Therefore, our individual sense of separation that we recognize in the forms of loneliness and boredom are merely reflections of this ancient emotional thought recognition which exists already in the mind of the Source Creator. At an individual microcosmic level, there is no permanent solution to this dilemma because we have separated ourselves inside a limited thought loop cocoon of individualism or ego-mindedness. But by willingly learning to sacrifice our individual false identity and embracing instead a much larger sense of self-awareness, we can begin to experience the great heart. This is the state of tranquility and rest and is the entire spiritual journey. In a passage that's included in the verses on the faith mind by the third Zen patriarch, it states, The great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. When love and hate are both absent, everything becomes clear and undisguised. Make the smallest distinction, however, and heaven and earth are set infinitely apart. If you wish to see the truth, then hold no opinion for or against anything. To set up what you like against what you dislike is the disease of the mind. When the deep meaning of things is not understood, the mind's essential peace 
is disturbed to no avail. The way is perfect like vast space where nothing is lacking and nothing is in excess. Indeed, it is due to our choosing to accept or reject that we do not see the true nature of things. What this means is we must not seek to find the ultimate reality because we are the ultimate reality. We only need to remove the veils and barriers to it. And that means not cherishing our personal opinions, not placing value judgments regarding one thing or idea or another, but instead regarding the world as a temporary arising, a meaningless phenomenon that comes and goes like sparks arising from a fire or bubbles appearing in a flowing river. What I have learned is the profound value in cultivating the conscious absorption of the living current of life. It's a real experience and it's always available. It's always present within us. Yet it does take a little time to recognize and tap into. Once one embodies that experience directly, they find that philosophies, beliefs, and arguments all become folly, and they're seen as meaningless. This is why I've recommended to begin with biogenic meditation using small pots of wheatgrass. The life force energy is concentrated in these tender blades of grass. And when one begins to develop sensitivity, the effects become cumulative. And eventually, one can tune into it at any time. This is actually an ancient knowledge that is still available to us today. And it brings a different kind of freedom, inner quiet, and a profound sense of fulfillment without the need for philosophy or religious beliefs or opinions. Ironically, the state of loneliness and boredom that we experience in this world can actually become a purifying fire for deep healing and inner transformation. Now this doesn't mean isolation from others. We do need social interaction and human connections at certain levels. We are wired this way as humans. And our lineage of ancestors are depending upon us to complete and heal those separation aspects that they may have not been able to achieve when they were alive. All things are connected together in this great mystery. And it is always wise and beneficial to choose to live a quiet, introspective life if possible. Transcend loneliness and boredom. Live a simple life. Live close to nature. Absorb the angels of the earthly mother and allow others to pursue whatever path they choose. If you would like more information on this path, please read my book, Painoven, Teachings of the Temple Dwellers. Peace be with you.